and received with gracious appreciation of the topic in his book distribution. And not only was I happy, but also enthused to hear about the topic. I guess many of you are maybe not directly involved with book distribution, but maybe many of you have come because you received the book somehow or other. So I'll begin by showing through a letter that was written by Srila Prabhupada how powerful, and I guess the other, the more appropriate word is how beneficial distributing his books are. These books are, this is transcendental knowledge. This knowledge is not some philosophy created by a great philosopher or some great saint. It is knowledge that is coming from God through the heart of his pure representative and then wrote, wrote written on paper. This knowledge is pure. It's not coming from someone's mind or intelligence. It's coming directly from God. So this knowledge that you find in these books are descending from the spiritual world. And that is something important. Srila Prabhupada himself would read his own books. And many times he would have his disciples read his books to him. And he would very much appreciate. And sometimes he would comment, I am writing and Krishna is speaking. So Krishna is speaking through someone who is pure. The power of purity is the power of being an instrument for the Supreme Pure. So it's called transparent via media. That there is no ego in the way. That knowledge is coming through a pure person and delivered to the world in various ways, especially through, not, through books. So this is a letter about book distribution written by Srila Prabhupada to German disciples. In the letter is dated May 6th, 1977. So this is only a few months before Srila Prabhupada departed from the planet. And he begins, My dear beloved disciples, please accept my blessings. I know that over the past years you have suffered so many tribulations to push forward Krishna consciousness in Germany, but this has not stopped you from your determination to serve the cause of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. A devotee is pleased when there is difficulty, for in these difficulties he is forced to remember Krishna. We cannot expect that the people of Kali Yuga will, become, will welcome our attempt to spread Krishna consciousness. It is just like a lunatic asylum. The patients are running around madly, and when the doctor tries to give them treatment, they insist they are not crazy. Sometimes the patient even strikes the doctor. So our task is like that. We cannot stand to see people suffering due to ignorance. What is ignorance? They do not know that they are not their body. This Krishna consciousness, consciousness movement is meant to deliver people to the proper understanding that they are not their body, but they are a pure spirit soul. We may or may not be appreciated, that is not our concern. We must execute the order of the Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is Yadi Deka Tari Kaha Krishna Upadesh Amara Agya Guru Hoi Tara Desh. 
Whoever you meet, instruct them to follow the orders of Sri Krishna as they are given in the Bhagavad Gita and in Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, by my order, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. So here, now we get to the essence of the point of the letter. So our business is to satisfy the previous acharyas in Krishna. If they are pleased, then we, we know our work is successful. Go on spreading the Sankirtan movement more and more. I am only one person, but because all of you have kindly cooperated with me, this movement has now become a success all over the world. Be assured that there is no more direct way to preach than to distribute Krishna conscious books. Whoever gets a book is benefit, benefited. If he reads the book, he is benefited still more. If he gives the book to someone else for reading, both he and the other person is benefited. Even if one does not read the book but simply holds it, holds it and sees it, he is benefited. If he simply gives a small donation towards the work of Krishna consciousness, he is also benefited. Anyone who distributes these transcendental literatures, he is also benefited. Therefore, Sankirtam is the prime benediction for the age. Krishna Varnam Tusa Krishna Sangha Upanga Saparshadam Yagnai Sankirtana Prayaya Janti Hisumeda Saha. Hoping this meets you all well, your ever well wisher. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, signed. So we can see from Prabhupada's own words uh, how beneficial uh, distributing transcendental knowledge is. Sometimes we say that a person may have so many problems and you may somehow try to alleviate a person's problems, their sufferings in different ways. But if you give them the knowledge how they can solve all their problems, then that is the best form of welfare work. In other words, when someone can take care of themselves, then there's no more problems in their life. So what is that taking care that is giving knowledge? Ignorance is suffering, knowledge is freedom. When we have knowledge, or at least we're in contact with knowledge, then that knowledge can free us from all problems, all sufferings, all difficulties. And that is simply a byproduct of the knowledge. The real point of the knowledge, it takes you to Krishna. So transcendental knowledge is described by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita is the mature fruit of bhakti. As bhakti matures, just like a fruit, you, when you plant a tree, the tree grows, and after so many years, buds start to sprout, and then fruit starts to come. And then that fruit grows and becomes ripe, and then it's relishable and edible. So transcendental knowledge is the ripened fruit of bhakti. And when has that knowledge, or can use that knowledge, then one is free from all difficulties and on the path back to the spiritual world. So knowledge is power, knowledge is greatness. In fact, there's no greater power within the universe than transcendental knowledge. Even all the armies and all the artillery and all the power that is in the world in a material sense cannot equal the benefit of transcendental knowledge. Because the body may be killed, but when if one has transcendental knowledge, they can go on to the spiritual world. So knowledge is greater than anything material, <coughs> transcendental knowledge. Prabhupada tells a little story it's a kind of a like analogy, sometimes in Vedic literature. A lot of analogy is used to illustrate points, simple stories. Sometimes they're so simple that a child can remember them or repeat them easily. There's one story. Come on up, we're vegetarians, don't worry. Come on. 
Mm-hmm. Ladies are okay, the men need more room. There's one story where in the jungle there was one lion. The lions don't get to eat much. They have to really work hard to get their food. Because when the lion goes out, a bird comes out and signals to the other animals, the lion's out. And then, yeah, there's a bird called the pharaoh. Makes noise and everybody runs. But this lion was real crafty. So he was attacking the animals indiscriminately. And so the animals were really in distress. So they thought, well, we have to do something about this lion. He's just making our life impossible. So they held a council meeting, GBC meeting. (laughs) And they decided what to do. And the conclusion was, we'll have to sacrifice one of us every two weeks to the lion. That way he won't indiscriminately just come and, you know, use us for prey. So, after making the decision, they approached the lion. The lion thought it was a good idea. He could rest in peace and get his meals regularly, and everyone, the animals could be somewhat peaceful. So, one time it was the turn of this rabbit to be sacrificed to the animal, to the lion. So this rabbit was a little smart. So he decided to take a really long time to get to the lion. You know, he was really late for his appointment. I guess you wouldn't be too enthusiastic to go for that appointment anyway. So, and the lion said, why are you late? I'm really hungry. He said, I'm lucky I'm here. There was this other lion and he was chasing me. And I said to him, you know, you can't eat me. I'm supposed to be eaten by this other lion. (laughs) <laughs> so, and I had to really work hard to get away from her. And so the lion said, what other lion? <laughs> he said, I'll show you, come. So he came, he said, he's in this well, look down there. So, when, so he looks in the well and he sees his own reflection. He says, you see him? He so sees him. And he roars and then the echo comes back. And so he said, oh, there's a well, a lion down here. So he jumps in the well. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> so knowledge is greater than power. <laughs> so when you have transcendental knowledge, you're free from all suffering, all misery, and you're even free from death. This knowledge can free you from death also. Because death has to do with the body, and this knowledge can give you the realization, not just teach you theoretically, but give you the realization that you are different than the body. And that's real transcendental knowledge, to know you're something different. Death, everyone will get that chance. The, The death comes to this body. But if we mistakenly identify ourself with the body, then death becomes a problem. But we're not these bodies. We're the soul within the body. That's part of transcendental knowledge. That's the negative part, who we're not. We're not this body, or we're not anyone else's body. (laughs) But who are we? We're an eternal soul, part and parcel of Krishna. That's the identity of all living beings. And that soul has the same qualities as Krishna. Krishna is eternal, Soul is eternal. Krishna is full of transcendental knowledge. We also have full knowledge up to a certain degree. And we are unlimitedly happy in our spiritual position. And that's the nature of God. The only difference between us and God is God is the complete aspect of these qualities. And we are partial. Although we are partial, we're complete. But he's the supreme complete. Om Purnam Adaha Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachite Purnasya Purnadaya Purnam Iva Visishite From the complete whole, so many other wholes are complete, coming. So we're a completely complete unit of ourselves, but separated from our source, we're lost. 
we're, we're identifying ourselves for what we're not, and then we're acting on that identity, and because of that, we suffer. Suffering comes by misidentification of ourself. We think we're this body, or we, we think by pleasing the senses of the body, we are pleasing ourselves. But that is not true, because we're not these bodies. So this knowledge is power, and it's freedom. And that is what we call preliminary knowledge. The essence of knowledge is to know Krishna. Or what is the nature of Krishna? What is the nature of the spiritual world? What is our nature of our relationship with Krishna? And how to bring about that relationship? That is called devotional service. So these books are, when we're out distributing books, or even reading these books, this is the highest form of knowledge. And this knowledge doesn't change as time moves on. As time moves on, the knowledge that we receive in this world is true and not true according to time, place, and circumstances. That's why this truth is relative. There's no absolute truth in this world. As time makes something correct and incorrect by its movement, so what is correct becomes incorrect, and what's incorrect may also become correct in the due course of the movement of time. That is the nature of this world. A simple example, the young girl is so beautiful, but give her a few years, and then she's different, right? <laughs> it's not that she's the same person, but that beauty is no longer there because of time. So the things of this world are always changing rich, powerful families after so many generations no longer have that status anymore. Time changes everything. So, therefore, we say, in this world there is no real truth. The transcendental knowledge is of the nature of spirit, and spirit is not subject to time. Something exists always in its essence and never changes. Krishna never changes. He never changed. He's always the same personality. <laughs> In the fact, he, of course, uh, the knowledge about Krishna is unlimited. So as we know, as we learn more and more about Krishna, we're actually <coughs> seeing Krishna in more in different ways or more complete ways. But Krishna is always the same, and our relation with Krishna is always the same. And even if we forget Krishna for one billion births. Krishna and our relationship with him never changes. The only thing that covers that relationship is forgetfulness. So forgetfulness or ignorance is the number one enemy of the condition of the soul because it causes one to act and think in the wrong way. So knowledge is power, transcendental knowledge. So the book Marathon means to give someone an opportunity as Prabhupada says in the very beginning of this letter here, he says, um, uh, we cannot stand to see people suffering due to ignorance. So that is the nature of a great soul. They're motivated by compassion, not by, you know, like power or prestige or facilities, or buildings, or money. They're only interested in bringing this knowledge to others. Because the highest form of happiness is to see another person happy. And that's the nature of love. Love means if you love someone, then you want to see that person happy. And when they're happy, you, you feel satisfied, if, especially if you were an instrument to bring about that happiness. So a pure soul, he loves Krishna unconditionally. And because he sees everything inside of Krishna, and nothing is separate from Krishna, Krishna and his energies are together. So therefore he automatically loves everyone. So his love for Krishna is expressed by giving Krishna to others. That's called compassion, or we might say preaching. We use the word preaching. 
but it's actually a movement of compassion. Prabhupada used the word paropaka. Paropaka means to do good to others. Mm -hmm. um, this movement is about doing good to others because that's what Lord Chaitanya wants. He wants everyone to become Krishna conscious or God conscious. So you want to please the Lord and you want to get the mercy of the Lord to carry out the Lord's instructions. And as you carry out the Lord's instructions, you also ad adopt the same mood as the Lord. You also feel the same thing as the Lord does towards others. So that was Prabhupada. Prabhupada would, I remember there was one incident where uh, the devotees were in Mayapur and it was during a big festival. And uh, they had just finished taking a feast and they used the, you know, the leaf plates to put the food on. So the plates were thrown into a big area, it was like a garbage area. And then some of the little villagers, the kids, were running into it and dogs were running into it to get the scraps. So the dogs and the kids were fighting over the food, the little kids. So Prabhupada saw that and tears came to his eyes. He was motivated by the compassion that, you know, we have so much and these children are just fighting over pieces of grain that are thrown away. So he says, from now on, we should feed everybody in this area. No one should go hungry for the net, for 10 miles in this area. And then he began the Food for Life program in India as a means to give food to people because he saw that they that's what they needed. They were starving. They didn't have enough food. So that's the nature of a great soul. Even on a material level, they feel the suffering of others. So trend, distributing books means to be an instrument for the compassion of the Lord, to be an instrument for the compassion of the Supreme, of the spiritual master in the same way. And when someone takes a book, as we read from this letter, even if they see the book, even if they don't even buy the book, or if they give some donation and say, thank you very much, but that's okay, still they benefit. What to speak if they read the book, take it home, put it on their shelf, it becomes a deity. It's like the deity. Sometimes, in some of our temples, I think we also do it here, we take the books and put them on the altar and put a garland around them. And we can also do puja to the books because the books are actually deities. They're actually deities. It's Krishna in the form of knowledge. Krishna comes in the form of his deity, the holy name, the spiritual master, uh, transcendental knowledge, prashadam. He comes in different forms. These are all forms of Krishna and different manifestations of himself. And they're all spiritual. So transcendental knowledge is another form of Krishna. So when you're giving transcendental knowledge to another person on the streets in the form of book distribution. It's more than just adding up how many books you get or how much Lakshmi you connect and you collect. It's actually giving a person Krishna. It's actually. And what's the greatest, you know, what's, what is the greater gift than that than you can give someone a chance to come in contact with God. And at the same time, it's an opportunity for them to change their life or to improve their life. And even if they don't be, become an active devotee, still that book has great transcendental benefit in their life. It's just funny, I, I preach in jails, and we do, we have an ISKCON prison ministry. And uh, we meet many people who became devotees in jail, never met a devotee, never been to a temple, no con. Somehow or other, they got a book. They got one of Srila Prabhupada's books. They start reading it. Said, this is what I'm looking for. Started chanting. Start actually writing devotees. And actually are practicing Krishna consciousness. Many of them. In fact, the, most of the inmates that we, we actually correspond with are people who never met devotees before. Not, not a majority, but the large majority. Only very few who were in prisons knew devotees before that. 
So these books are really powerful. It was interesting, we were doing a program in Slovenia in one women's prison. This was May this year. And there was these ladies, there was about 35, 40 <coughs> ladies. It was kind of like a country club atmosphere. <laughs> I've been to many prisons, but this atmosphere was like quite relaxed. The ladies wore whatever clothes they wanted. I mean, as far as there wasn't no prison uniforms or anything. And we came, we met the authorities there, they gave us a facility, we brought about 10 devotees, we had bhajan. And then we were talking with the ladies after in a very informal way, just talking about different things. So one of the ladies says, you know, many years ago, I was in my apartment and this one devotee knocked on my door, I didn't know who he was, and he sold me this book, Bhagavad Gita. And my whole, later on, my whole apartment burnt, and everything in the apartment got destroyed, except the Gita. <laughs> and she went to her room and came out with that Gita. It had a few black spots here and there on the book, but it was in perfect condition. She kept the Gita. She said everything burnt, including all her other books. <laughs> So it's, there's something special about these books, really special. And after meeting us and then realizing the mercy she had received from that book, she became very serious. I think someone just told me last week that one of the ladies that met us in that prison is now out and now she's coming to the temple and practicing at least She's visiting the temple and associating with devotees. So, books are really, really powerful. Really very beneficial. I just had one story I was going to say. I forgot it. <laughs> but these are, these are examples of you know, how powerful these books are. Uh, they're not ordinary. Oh, yeah, I remember the story now. Devotees were distributing books in Australia. And they had this book, Science of Self-Realization. You've seen it, that pocketbook that's a little fat. It's about 300 pages. So there was this, they met this man on the street, big guy. And they gave him, they tried to give him a book. He says, you know what I do with these books? I rip them in half. <laughs> because he was like this big muscle guy, he would just like rip books in half. Ooh. He said, all right, let's see you rip, you rip this one. He said, this is nothing. So he tried, he pulled it as hard as he could, and he was amazed he couldn't rip it. <laughs> I mean, he had ripped other books that were much bigger than that. And he was trying, and then he was astounded. He said, what is, what is about this book? I said, it's transcendental, you can't rip it. <laughs> So he bought the book and later he came to the temple just to find out more, you know. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> so you never know, you know, these books are very special. <laughs> and how many devotees who have received, who have become, how many people who have actually become devotees who never got a book directly, but somehow <coughs> either their friend. There's one story, there was one in southern, very southern America, it's kind of a section of America that, <clears throat> what we say, very farm country, people are not so sophisticated, very farmers. And there's one young man was sitting in a, a laundromat. He was sitting on the laundry table and he was eating a watermelon. He was spitting the pits into the garbage can. And he just happened to drop his watermelon into the garbage can. <laughs> it slipped out of his hand. So he decided, I want to get my watermelon back. <laughs> so he reached in and came up with a book. What's this, Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> he couldn't even say it right. He, he came up with a Gita, it was in the garbage. Somebody had thrown it. And he was fascinated, to start reading the books, and then later he came to Nuvrindav and joined the movement and became, I remember, he became Tual our welder in Nurindavan. 
So there's so many stories how these books have changed the lives of people, even if they weren't given directly to the people, these lives were changed. So when we're out there distributing, and everyone should distribute books. You might say, well, I'm not a devotee. I'm just coming here. I'm just visiting. Distribute it anyway. It's Christmas time. You give gifts to your friends, to your family members. Sometimes we're sitting in, in, we're, and we're sitting in our house thinking, who can I give? What gift can I get to my friend, to my mother? To my... Just give everybody a book. <laughs> now, that would be a great, It's easy. You don't have to worry about going so much shopping. You just come to one place, the Hare Krishna Temple. <laughs> give all your friends books. <laughs> so it's, an, it's a nice way to give a present to others. And giving transcendental knowledge is the best present because if someone benefits by that, that benefit never is lost. It's always there and it always grows more and more. So what can we say about book distribution? Srila Prabhupada has blessed it as one of the features of bringing Krishna consciousness to the world. He said the communists were very successful in spreading their movement because they flooded the world with their propaganda. They just printed so many books and, and flyers and material and distributed everywhere. That's how communism spread in many of those countries. So he said this is our movement, just flood the world with books. There was a nice story in Bombay. The devotees in the Chalpati Bombay Temple went out in, in numbers. So they went to one of the biggest train stations in Bombay. I, I'm not sure which one it was. Probably Dadar. And uh, there were so many devotees at the train station. And then this one man was walking along. He was approached by one devotee with a Bhagavad Gita. And he refused. He walked on. And he walked a little farther in the train station. He got approached again by another devotee. And again he refused. And then he went on a little farther, and a third devotee approached the same man. He said, I can't refuse this time. <laughs> this is the third time you've approached me in the last ten minutes. <laughs> I'll have to buy it. There must be something to this. <laughs> Bought a book. So this is something about tactics that just have so many devotees out there that wherever they turn, they can't. They just run into a devotee. <laughs> they can't refuse. Just every, you, guys, you guys are everywhere. Yeah, it's true. We are. I remember one story. This is a, I don't know. You might say it's a coincidence. One boy, a devotee was distributing books in New York to this one man. The man took a book, thanked him, and the man traveled. A week later, wound up in California, and that same book distributor was in California again. He happened to travel, too, and he met the same man again. He said, you're here, too. <laughs> Is there more than one of you? <laughs> so, you know, it's like that. This is another way to be effective in book distribution. There's have so many people out there. <laughs> and wherever people go, they run into a book distributor somewhere. So, you know, and I'm sure when you, we read these books, we find transcendental peace, at least we find peace of mind just by reading Prabhupada's books. Immediately our minds become peaceful. and. Uh, the intellect becomes, what we say, stimulated by this knowledge. I know personally, I can speak personally, I get no greater satisfaction than reading Prabhupada's books. You know, we say chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the essence, and it is, and it always will be. But I get so, so much support from consciousness from reading. This morning I was feeling a little dry, so I was thinking, I got so many things to do, I'm just going to push it all aside. And I just picked up the Chaitanya Chari to read that I read for two hours. And after I was done, I didn't get anything else done, but I didn't care. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was completely satisfied and, and happy. <laughs> I felt completely fulfilled. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's it's like that. We can just just absorb ourselves in a book, and every the whole world just stops, you know. And we find happiness in reading Prabhupada's books. So we find knowledge. We find so much peace of mind. So these books are, as Prabhupada says, this is uh, for time bombs. That's the word he used, time bombs. That means if you distribute them all, someone will, in time, get the benefit. What time does the class end? 5.30? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so the devotees will be going on, starting a marathon. A marathon is a way of just getting everyone out. <laughs> it's a good idea to get to inspire book distribution. So you can all join in the marathon. I'm sure China Thai has programs for engaging everyone in book distribution. Any questions? Comments? Realizations? Yes? Hare Krishna? Yeah, we have. There's you can download this stuff from from the internet. There's a thing called Pocket Veda. If you download, you go on the internet, look for Pocket Veda. It's Prabhupada's books. You can download it and put it on your Kindle. You can put it on your i iPad. It's all there. Yeah, it's there. Um, Yeah, we're do, we're we're always thinking. There's one devotee in America, and he's called the Emperor of Book Distribution. His name is Vaisheshika. Mm -hmm. He's always thinking of how to put books in different places. <coughs> we have what is called smart boxes now. Smart boxes. You put a box in somebody's store, and you ask them to keep some books there, or some place where it's somewhat public. There's nobody there. There's a box. And there's books. And it says, take a book, give a donation. And then people will take a book and give a, you know, one pound, two pounds, or some, whatever they feel like. There's another thing, they also set up vending machines with books in it, just like you can get your potato chips, you know. <laughs> you can pull out and back to, how uh, was it? Beyond birth and death, you know. Get a little book. Then we're also doing a, a program with books in motels. If any of you are motel owners, <laughs> you know, Gideon's Bible has been in motels for I don't know how many decades. I remember if I've ever stayed in a hotel when I was traveling, there would always be a Bible in, in the room. Now we're doing the same thing with Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> People come and they can see a Bible, Prabhupada's Gita in the hotel room now. So these are different ideas, how to make books available to people in different ways. In terms of approaching people on the street, have you a method that you could um, advise us is effective to, in order you know, to attract people? You know, I just heard something interesting. Someone asked Prabhupada that. I just heard it today or yesterday. Prabhupada said, there's, there's no method you need to learn. Just be yourself. That's all. Just be yourself. He says, Krishna is in the heart. He will inspire you. In other words, what Prabhupada is saying is, if you have the desire, that, that's the method. Yeah. It's no tricky lines or something. Sometimes you, meet, you, meet, you need something to get people to stop. And once you get them to stop, then that's 90%. Then that's but I tell you, one way to sell a book it's in that tactic, is when you're talking to them, give them the book, and then talk. Once they feel it, it's harder for them to give it back. <laughs> it works. It's great. Because there's something about holding that book that they start feeling like, well, this is mine. It's nice. So you can, that, that can be used, you know. Just, but as far as what you say, you know, Krishna will inspire you from in the heart. Just try to talk to them. 
relate to them as a person, not as an opportunity to get a book sold. If you see them as a customer, then that's another thing. If you see them as a conditioned soul who really needs this knowledge, then Krishna will give you the words. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just want to share a realization. Sure, please. Yeah, I was, uh, someone took me to a haunted house. And the Movie was, house? Yeah, it was really haunted. It was haunted. Haunted, haunted, haunted house. Haunted, yeah, completely haunted. It was horrible. Lights were going off. And I took one bag of the heater there and the whole thing stopped. <laughs> <laughs> they actually protect the house. Yeah. It went back to normal. I mean, that's how powerful the books are. The books are very powerful. It's like the whole house. <laughs> yeah, Bhagavad Gita is non different than Krishna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. It's so, wonderful. Yes. Marge, you mentioned in your class that um, the books are deities. And sometimes I hear brothers say, oh, well, if the books are deities, how can we just give them out on the street to anyone? So, how would you answer that question? Well, Krishna, we give the prasadam is also non different than Krishna, but we give that out because people need prasadam. They also need knowledge. So they're deities in the sense that they're not like the deity on the altar. You wouldn't go out and give the deity on the altar to somebody. <laughs> but they're, we're using the word de deity in the sense that they're worshipable. They're absolute in the work, the process of worship. So when you're giving, when you use that word, you're just making a point. But this knowledge is meant to be. Knowledge means to when you give knowledge, you get knowledge. If you try to keep knowledge, you lose knowledge. And this is explained in Krishna book that unused knowledge is like having a pot of water with a crack in it. And then gradually the water seeps out. So if you have knowledge, you want to keep knowledge, and you want that knowledge to expand, you distribute the knowledge. And then it, and then it becomes greater. That's true about anything spiritual. Material, whatever you have, you give, becomes less. Spiritual, whatever you have, it begin, becomes greater. Becomes greater. So yeah, they're deities in the sense that they're worshipable. Anything else, anyone? Uh, yes, a couple of hands there. Uh, oh, Balaramji, Hare Krishna. Uh, you What's your new name? Balaram. Balaram. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> My question is, how do we differentiate academic knowledge from spiritual knowledge? Because uh, academics also um, coming from like the Saraswati and like that, uh, where spiritual knowledge we uh, used to know God. So how, what's the difference? There's different categories of knowledge. There's academic, there's preliminary knowledge, there's more developed knowledge. Knowledge is in different categories. The highest knowledge is knowledge about Krishna. That's completely spiritual. The knowledge of our relationship with Krishna is also spiritual. But the knowledge between what is, what is matter and what is spirit, that's preliminary, that's basic. That's what Krishna spoke in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. But logic, reason, argument, and academia are platforms where one can understand certain principles that are conducive to understanding higher knowledge. It's like there is logic also in our books. We deal with logic. But sometimes that logic is contradictory to what we call material logic. So one has to get an understanding by, from the spiritual teacher. What is real knowledge? What is what is the difference between transcendental knowledge, preliminary knowledge, academia knowledge? Academia <laughs> knowledge more or less falls into the category of material. You know, basic understanding. But the qualification for becoming Krishna conscious is not, you know, we say, 
good intelligence. It's simply devotional practice. Anybody can practice devotional service. Anybody can practice devotional service. So sometimes you find academia will take transcendental knowledge and give an academian, what we say, uh, critique on that. Sometimes they try to read very much. They take Chaitanya Charitamrita and try to analyze it from different points of view. But you can't understand bhakti. Bhakti is a secret. That's why Krishna says, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. It's a great secret. What is the secret? Krishna tells you the secret. It's a secret that you that you can you can you can you can hear the secret and still it's a secret. <laughs> In the sense that you can't understand it until you practice it, then the secret is revealed. You only understand the knowledge until you practice it. And theoretical knowledge is simply preliminary to get you to practice. But once you practice, then the knowledge becomes what we say part of you. It transforms you. So academic knowledge can't do that. There's no transformation. <laughs> Transcendental knowledge gives you good qualities, spiritual acumen, and relation and awakens your relationship with Krishna. That's different. That's much different. Yes, sir. Uh, I've never seen any CDs or DVDs being distributed on these days. I know you say it just uh, it can be downloaded from internet, but it's just not the same, really. No, it's you not know? the same. Uh, so, is there any some reasons for for why we never have any discs or DVDs distributed on these days? Uh, you mean with our books on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, okay. even including in the book. Like, uh, I, I just asked because I saw the other day... It's a good idea. It's actually a nice idea to distribute knowledge in the form of in this kind of media. But... Okay, you can, that's your service. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a great idea. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> but it's a nice idea to take these books, put them on CDs, and distribute the CDs. That would be, what do you, what do you think of that? I mean, it sounds good. At one point they had that Bhagavad Gita Interactive. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, Bhagavad Gita Interactive. The DVD file yeah. approach. It wasn't something that was very successful. So it could be done in a more limited way. I think on the streets, the books are much more, more effective. As they say, when you hold the book, it's like you got something. You can feel it. It's tangible. Thank you. But we, that could be doing on, done on a limited scale, recording these books and putting them out in form of CDs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My own personal experience is, you know, I have the database on my computer, but I never read from it unless I need it for research or for putting some letter to someone. When I read, I always read the books. I won't read on computer. And it's a whole different effect of the media, and I don't seem to get the same what we say, absorption, as you do when you read a book. There's something about that kind of media. It's, it's less less personal. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's true. I have that experience myself. I would rather read from the books. And if I don't have the book, I'll look for the book, even though I have it on my computer. <laughs> okay, anything else? Yes, Hare Krishna. You, sh you nodded your head when I said many of you have become devotees because of... Was that your also in your experience? I was just going to share that. I mean, 
not to the name of the story, but we talk about um, books being time bombs. Mm. And uh, I came through through my grandfather, which he had on his shelf for 35 years. 35 so, years. Yeah, so do distribute the books because somebody will take them. Somebody will get the benefit. Wonderful. Even if it takes 35 years, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Yvonne went off. Thank you. <laughs> you are a, a nice fruit of that bomb blast. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, true. I, I'll tell one story and then I'll end because it's a little late. I was, I, my base is Chicago. So I was there. And one hippie came into the temple. He said, I want to join. And I went to go to New Vrindavan, our West, and I said, oh, that's nice. Well, what do you know about our movement? He said, well, he told, and he told his story. He said, I was sitting in my house, and my father was getting rid of his old books. Was, I know, at least I know in America, they have these bookstores. You can just take all your old books to the bookstores, and they'll give you something for your book. And then they resell it, used books. So his father was carrying out these books, and he saw on the top, the Bhagavad Gita, and he just noticed it, and he said, that, let me see that. So his father gave it to him, and he read it, and he read half of it, and he was really inspired. And then he tried to find out, well, who's behind this? And he couldn't find anything. And he was really somewhat concerned, so he did some research, couldn't find anything about a temple, anything. So finally, one day, he was walking down the street, and a book distributor met him. And then he said, oh, I've been looking for you. So he explained his story, came to the temple. And I remember I met him, and he wanted to join. And I, he said, take me to New Vrindavan, and I did. And he joined, shaved up, and got initiated. Because wow. <laughs> he somehow or other, he saw his father carrying a Bhagavad Gita. Right? So there's many stories like that. So many stories. You could tell stories all the way up to 10 o'clock. <laughs> then I think you would probably get a little bit hungry. <laughs> so we'll end here. So anyway, if, if you could spend one day or two days or whatever time you can just distributing books, go out just for an experience. Just try it. You'll find it's a wonderful experience. Your, your Krishna's instrument out there. It's a nice experience. Just, you don't have to be initiated. You don't have to have... Just, just give it a try. Take a few books and try to sell them. Okay. Thank you very much. Siddha Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Samaveda Bhaktarinda Ki Jai Gauda Premanandi Ki Jai 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 J